Chapter 25 After another week, Mom was fully transferred to Texas. She was still in the process of selling her house in Georgia, but all of her belongings were here. She even had a job at the hospital in downtown Fort Worth. Dad said the two of them were getting remarried, but they weren't having a fancy wedding. Jordan found that sad because their first wedding hadn't been fancy either. Mom had been super pregnant with him at the time. Jordan wondered if he would ever get married, and if so, would he have a traditional wedding or just go down to City Hall like Mom and Dad were going to do? He was mulling this over in the cafeteria at school when Aaron suddenly joined him. You look happy, she said. Things are going great, so why shouldn't I be? She laughed as Connor and Travis eventually joined the table. That's good to hear. Has your dad found a new house yet? He said he found one this morning and that he just has to hammer out the details first. He's going to take Connor and me to see it after school. Fun! Are you going to have a party at the new house after you move in? Jordan laughed. We'll see. He looked at his cousin and Travis, who were talking and laughing together across the table. When did they become friends again? He asked Aaron discreetly. Again? Jordan suddenly remembered that, as far as Aaron was concerned, the two always hated each other. Nor was she aware that the two guys had secretly been hooking up. Jordan wasn't going to be the one to tell her. When the boys got home later that day, Dad asked them if they still wanted to see the new house. Of course. Of course, they said. So the whole family took a relatively long trip to a rich-looking neighborhood. It was the kind of suburban area one would see in a movie that made fun of suburbia. The house Dad bought was a two-story, all-brick monster. It almost looked like a mansion. The neighborhood was gated, with security posted at the entrance. Jordan didn't really relish the thought of driving through that every day once he got his own car. It sounded like a hassle. On second thought, however, he probably wouldn't have to worry about any more murders in his backyard. His attitude suddenly brightened as everyone got out of the car and stepped into their new home. Jordan took in the new house smell, wood and paint and plaster. He loved the smell of new. This place is the shit, said Connor. Thank you, Dad replied, and watch your mouth. Yes, sir. Mom stood in the large kitchen leaning on an island in the middle. She had a far-off look, like her mind was somewhere else entirely. Connor ran to the backyard, and Jordan decided to join him. The yard was more like a hill. The boys could see tiny buildings far away on the horizon, but what really caught Jordan's attention was the in-ground swimming pool directly in front of him. Though it was November and cold, He delighted in the thought of swimming in that beautiful blue water once the weather grew warmer. Next, the boys ran upstairs to pick out their rooms. All of the bedrooms seemed the same size, so neither Jordan nor Connor benefited from their choices. And that was just fine. Too bad they couldn't move in today. Dad said it would take at least a month to finalize everything. Life really seemed to be returning to normal. No, better than normal. That was, until Dad dropped the bombshell. You guys will have to start a new high school. This place isn't zoned for the one you're going to now. What? What? Jordan and Connor said together. I know how you feel. I had to go to a new school when my brother and I moved as kids. I don't want to go to a new school, Jordan whined. Do you guys still want to live here? Yes, Yes, the boys replied together. 
You can't have it both ways, guys. Jordan and Connor looked at each other and then sighed at the same time. Their choice was clear. Thanksgiving was only a week away, and the boys had bugged Dawn about inviting Grandpa Stephen. The kids wanted him there, and Dawn did not. In the end, the boys won out. Unfortunately, Dawn didn't have his father's number, so he had to drive over and invite the old man in person. Dawn found him in his backyard, watering one of the peach trees. Stephen was wearing a loose silk shirt and shorts with sandals. Summer wear. Stephen. The old man turned his head and grinned. Hello, son. Don didn't like being called that, but he let it pass. I don't suppose you have any plans for the holidays. Stephen ceased spraying the tree and thought for a moment. I suppose I don't. Are you inviting me over? The boys are. And you're not? That annoying twinkle in his eyes. Don sighed. You'll have to forgive me for being upset with you, but I guess I can set my feelings aside for one day. I'd love to come over. His smile seemed warm and genuine now. He plucked a peach from the tree and offered it to Don. Don bit into it reluctantly and found it sweet and juicy. A flood of memories washed over him, memories of summers as a child in Florida. Of course, Stephen wasn't a part of those memories. Nothing can make up for all the years we've lost, Stephen said quietly. I'm hoping to do right with the time we have left. Don stopped chewing. Are you dying? Slowly but surely. I'm an old man, you know. Don laughed and took another bite. Your boys will be okay, Donovan. I promise. Don truly wanted to believe that, but he couldn't. Stephen arrived around noon on Thanksgiving Day. Jordan and Connor entertained him with video games and stories while Don and Monica worked on the food. Don was amazed by how well the boys had taken to their mysterious grandfather and wished he could follow suit. Don was starting to like the man, but still didn't trust him completely. Everyone had to make their own plate in the kitchen, and Jordan, as always, stocked up on extra stuffing and gravy. There was also collard greens, mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese, sweet potato pie, and, of course, the turkey. Monica always bought cranberry sauce in a can, and it would come pouring out in its cylinder shape. Don loved to cut off a few cold slices to complement his meal. Once everyone was seated at the dining table, each said what they were thankful for. Don called it a new tradition, since they had never done it before. Don and Monica were thankful for a healthy family. Jordan was thankful for the turkey. Connor was thankful for Grandpa. And Grandpa was thankful for the chance to reunite with his son and finally meet his beautiful grandchildren. After dinner, Don and Stephen stood on the front porch and stared at the sky. It was only midday and very blue. Jordan and Connor were inside, watching the game. Between who and who, Don didn't know. He never cared for sports. Stephen had been watching it with them, but had come looking for his son. Don didn't know how to feel about that as they stood together now. Is it sports in general you don't like? he asked Don. Without looking at him, Don replied, I like playing sports, but not watching them. You played a little baseball and did a little karate, I remember now. Don looked at him then. I told you, said Stephen. 
Just because you didn't see me doesn't mean I wasn't there. My guardian angel, Don said sarcastically. I tried to be. Stephen sounded annoyed now, and that gulled Don. I can see from that look on your face that my positive energy isn't working on you the way it does with others. Not for a lack of trying, Don said. You do have a sparkling personality. Stephen laughed. I don't mean that. I'm talking about literal energy radiating off of me right now. That caught Don's attention. You radiate energy too? It comes from your personality, sorry to say. You were always an angry person deep down. The curse just manifests what's inside us. I don't make the rules. Don shook his head. Whoever made the rules is stupid. And you're, what, a naturally positive person? To the core, Stephen admitted proudly. Don laughed. He was starting to loosen up, though whether that was because of his father's positive energy, he wasn't sure. Stephen said his goodbyes later that night and headed home. The kids did the dishes while Monica lay down. She complained of a migraine, one that she'd suffered on and off for a few months. Don went to his office and tidied up for a bit. As he straightened his desk, he saw a bundle of papers he didn't recognize. He picked it up and realized they were manuscript pages. He sat down and started reading. He stopped halfway through the fifty-plus pages. He'd written the truth of what had happened to him and Ethan. Horrified, he dropped the pages. He didn't remember writing any of it. It read like an autobiography very detailed and mercilessly accurate. If anyone read this... He stood and threw the manuscript into his file cabinet. He should destroy it, but he didn't. Something told him to keep it. He had written an account of his tragic life for a reason. The fact that he had written it subconsciously added extra meaning to the document. He had to keep it.